we are more than halfway done with going through our colors of the rainbow of ways in which teachers are doing all kinds of work that are not actually related to teaching. And this one, the green one, this is the one where teachers love to do some hobby work. What is hobby work? Well, I mean, teaching is our passion and our unique gifting. This administrative work is what we have to do because we're employed in some kind of a school district or whatever, but the green work often can be our hobby work. Now, hobby work can do two things. Hobby work can just be fun and it could kind of be a time waster and make things look pretty and more perfect, although it doesn't really give anything to the bottom line. It doesn't really impact the way that you teach or hobby work can be super, super productive. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you have a checklist that you love and you're going to color code that checklist and you're gonna put little bubbles on the end of every little one of the dots and, and you're gonna make it look really pretty. Now this may make you feel better because the checklist is now even prettier and you wanna use it more, but most of that was hobby work that was unnecessary and isn't really going to save you any time. But the hobby work that will save you time is very productive is to make a brand new checklist. And green is the color of checklists. Checklists for everything. Like, and as teachers, we love a checklist. Like we're probably the originator of to-do lists, to be honest. But the beauty of a checklist for a teacher is to have checklists for specific goals. Not just a never ending to-do list of things that you may or may not get to, but specific checklists. We're going on a field trip. This is my field trip checklist. These are the 21 things that I do from the time I decide I wanna have a field trip and I have to get approval for it, figure out how much it costs and book it and make the permission slips and make sure I have the right EpiPens and get the volunteers and then what's the bus number and did I, you know, all the way down. Like all of those things happen every single time you have a field trip. Do you have a comprehensive field trip list? That kind of hobby work, that'll save you, I don't know, 10 hours next year, like a lot of time. And every single thing that you do more than three times probably needs to have a checklist. So you're saying, Lisa, I would have like 49 checklists. Yes, that's okay. It doesn't matter because then when you have a disciplinary incident, you pull that checklist. When you have an, a request for an individualized education plan, you pull that checklist. Anytime you pull those checklists, this is what this does. This is your summer teacher brain helping your future school teacher brain not have to think. You have to do the work. You don't necessarily have to remember what all the work is and then reorganize it in the middle of a Tuesday in October when you also had a fire drill that day. Now you need to remember what you're supposed to do when someone gets referred for an individualized education plan. Do you see the difference? Like you're like, I would just like to pull the thing, put the person's name at the top or their number or whatever you wanna do and then be like, okay, do I have the official request for the evaluation. Have we set the first meeting? Have I gathered my, like, and you just have a checklist. You may not be doing everything on the checklist, but you know everything that's on the checklist. So make checklists till your heart's content, but make checklists that are meaningful and that are gonna save you so much time in the future. And then take them down to the copy room and make copies. You don't have to make a hundred copies, but I would make at least five copies of each checklist. Use it five times. When you get to the last one, put a post-it note on there that says last one, and then say, okay, I've used this three or four times. Are there any modifications I wanna to make to this before I run off another five? And then having those checklists ready to go in your education work box is gonna save you so much time, but mostly so much mental decision-making capacity in the school year to come. In this quick video series, I'm really trying to make visible the invisible work that teachers, administrators, and homeschoolers are doing in order to provide education to students. There is a lot of invisible work at home, at school, at work, and in everything we do. And when I really took some time and figured out what the invisible work was for educators, we created the education work box. This is really like your administrative assistant. Oh my goodness, wouldn't you love it? If you got an administrative assistant next year for your classroom, that is what the education work box is. So the education work box is an administrative assistant. It's gonna help you make visible the invisible work that you're doing and we get to have camp together. I get to be your teacher. 
Would you like a teacher that can guide you through making what I'm talking about in these videos visible for you, for your specific job in your specific classroom next year? We need to do this in July because Schools are in session all the way until the end of June, and they start again right in the beginning of August. Somewhere you fall in there, but in July, that's when you have the time and capacity to step back and really make a plan. I want to be the person that makes that plan with you. So we are going to have teacher camp the second week in July. It's a live camp, like it's camp. These are your camp supplies and you're gonna show up to camp. And when you get to camp, I will be there and I will greet you each day and I'll say, okay, today we're gonna to focus on this color or these two colors. Here's exactly what I want you to do. I'll give you a little pep talk. I'll remind you of the training you already have in your dashboard. And I will say, this is what I want you to do. I'll do this for like 15 or 20 minutes. And then I will break you out into small groups. You'll be in a different random small group each day who will be there to help answer your questions and you'll meet other teachers who are doing the same thing that you're doing. Collectively, we'll be together for two hours total and then I want you to block off the whole week as if camp was like nine to five or whatever your hours are going to be because when camp is over, you're gonna have so many ideas and so much energy that you're gonna to wanna to finish out that color or colors that day and then come back the next day to camp, we're gonna talk about a new color or colors and on and on and on. If you really block out the second week of July and do this live with us, you will start Monday overwhelmed and you will end Friday with 80% of your work box done. And the difference this will make in the amount of invisible work that you do next year or the decisions you have to make on the fly will be amazing. We're actually gonna do a pilot to figure out how many hours those are. We haven't done that yet, but that's coming as well. So join me, join me. Join the Education Certified Workbox Organizers. Join your other teacher colleagues together the second week in July. I can't wait to help you get your education workbox organized.